Hey, hey, long riders! Welcome back to Everything Fly Fishing. In this video, we got two amazing flies that you won't want to miss. So make sure you watch the end of the video where we give you proof that these flies work. It's going to be a great video. It's going to be a little long because we're going to cover two flies, two of our favorite flies of this type. So, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. You can do it right down there in the corner. There's a little thing. Hit that subscribe because you don't want to miss any of our tying videos. And if you're new here, also, go check out our other videos. Well, after this video is over, we'll give you an opportunity to do that too. So we'll stay to the end of the video for all that. And without any further ado, let's get to these two amazing killer flies. And like I said, at the end, we'll prove to you how good they work. Now, onto the vice. So there's a hook we used. We got them from Lively Legs, uh, which that was really cool of them. They sent us these hooks for free. That was really awesome. So we're going to use them, and uh, we don't have to debarb the hook because the hooks are already they're barbless hooks. Which way I'd like that. Now we're going to put the vise. The hook and the vise backwards and put our bead on. Whoa, did you see that? I pulled that bead right off. But that's the size of bead I want to use on this fly. It's a 3X, so it would be more like the size of a 10 hook. But I don't want that thick hook. So. I'm going to show you how to solve this problem. Okay, the first step into getting this bead to stay on is you got to apply some thread right behind the eyelet and make a bigger ball behind the eyelet. And what the eyelet is, that will keep the, the uh, bead from slipping off. So let's do that. Now you want to whip finish this and cut all your thread off. Now you want to apply some super glue to that ball that you put behind the eyelet. And this will make sure that bead ain't going anywhere. That ain't coming off, it ain't going anywhere. Slide the bead forward onto that ball, and that's how you apply an oversized bead. People are like, why don't you just use the bead? Because I don't want to. Screw that. You just you do what you want to do. If you want to make a f use it, I'm just showing you how to use a bigger bead. If you want to use a bigger bead, do it. I'm going to, like I said at the end of this video, I'm going to prove to you that they work. Now we're going to take that uh, hook and stick down in that eyelet and let it sit there for a while until that super glue dries. Make sure we didn't get any super glue glue down in the eyelet so you can't tie this fly on. So we're going to just put that hook in there and then we'll just turn it every turn it every once in a while as it dries to make sure it doesn't stick. The hook don't stick down in the eyelet either. All right, let's get into the main part of the fly now, man. That's what you guys have been waiting for. Uh, we're going to start with 70 denier olive green thread. And tie that in right behind the bead all the way to the back and head cement in a few wicks. Well, now we're going to take some of this tan organza. I know. He's like, Ogans again? This guy loves Ogans. Well, I do. And it works. Like I said, at the end of the video, you're going to see how good it works. So we're going to take five strands of this Ogans and then fold it in half and 
will triple. So you have about 15 strands when you're done. Okay, but it's really fine. And you're going to tie this in about the same, about three quarters length of the hook. Okay, now we're going to tie in some gold wire, probably about medium sized gold wire, and we'll tie that in. Okay, so we got this olive green uh, stuff like we used in the last dry fly pattern. If you haven't seen that, make sure you go check out our other videos. Alright, make sure you go check out our tying videos at the end of this video. I'll give you an opportunity to do that. Make sure you go check them out. This is, we're going to do this uh, same way, we're going to dub this fly. We're going to tie this, take one thread, there's only two, there's two intertwined, excuse me, I'm going to pull one apart, and I'll use one, and tie that in. I had super glue to the, the body. Well, you're going to wrap the dubbing up to that super glue there and you're going to see how strong you are. I'm going to tell you, prove to you how strong they are also at the end of this video. So you're going to want to stay tuned to all these, all this time part and wait to the end of the video and watch till the end. You're going to dub this fly, you're going to just wrap that thread up to make you know taper your body make that little sh cigar shape and then get right up to about where you're going to start your thorax maybe a little past where you think your thorax is going to start so you're going to wrap some thread and make sure everything's secure Now you're going to rib it with that wire and go the opposite set, opposite direction that you dub it on to make the fly secure, but with the super glue and the way we put that dubbing on, it, it wouldn't make a difference. But anyway, and you'll see how, you make the story at the end of this video on how, anyway, that's how you rib it. Okay, now you're going to grab yourself a piece of this nymp skin. This stuff is amazing stuff. I love how it adds detail to the fly. And you got to pull the paper off the back, and you're going to tie that directly on top of the hook. Just make sure it's on directly on top of the hook. So when you pull it forward, it for the shell and shell back, that it you know it's directly on top. Now we're going to tie on these, they're black with purple flake, uh, flashback legs and small. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you how to tie these in. Okay, there's two legs that go forward on these lively legs. They're the ones you're going to tie in right behind the bead. And you're going to tie these all so right up against the bead. You're going to go right up beside the bead. So you want that tab almost, right as close as you can get them front legs to that bead. And then you're going to tie 
just wrap a couple thread wraps there and you're going to go behind the first set of legs and tie back and then you're going to go just just like you did behind the bead you're going to wrap a, just a couple thread wraps not go way back on the the second set of legs you can tie just right behind the second leg that's some thread wraps Now you should have a little rubber tab hanging out the front of the front legs. You pull on that, you want to stretch it out, and then cut it off as close as you can. Don't cut your thread. And then you're going to go back to the back set of legs. You're going to pick up, you're cutting that whole back set of legs off. You're only using two front two. So you're going to pull that, stretch that out, and cut that off as close as you can to the thread. Okay, for the thorax dubbing, we're going to use some of that olive ice dubbing. You're probably like, why? Well, I, I didn't use olive. I just like it on the thorax on this fly. It's, it seems to work better when I just use ice dubbing on the thorax and not the, the abdomen part. Okay, you're going to apply this dubbing loose as this will make it look like gills or whatever else that nymph will have up in that thorax area. You're going to just apply dubbing loose and go all the way up right behind the bead with your dubbing. Now you're going to pull the nymph skin over top and tie it off right behind the bead. Now you're going to pull back on that nymph skin and cut it off. Now if you leave a little tip, tap of nymph, uh, nymph skin hanging out back, that's okay. Now you're going to add some more thread wraps right behind the bead. And then whip finish it. Now I like to add some hard as nails or you could add UV treatment to the nymph skin and that harden and that's it. Let's take a closer look at this fly. Hey, I hope you like that fly. Now, we, before we get on to the next one, you can pause it right here. Go get yourself a drink or something to eat or um, whatever you need to do. And we'll start on the second one. Or take a break, go have a cigarette. And we'll start on the second one. Well, you can pause it. Let's do it. Hey, welcome back. I hope you had some good food and munchies, lunch, dinner before you went back and tied this part. 
So without any further ado, we're going to go take you to the next fly. And like I said throughout that video so far, is you definitely want to stay tuned to the end of this video because I'm going to tell you some stories about the fly, living or show you proof that they catch these flies catch fish. So without any further ado, let's get to the next fly. Okay, we got a standard size 14 nymph hook. And we're going to add the size bead to fit that. Now, when you buy your beads, if you look on the beads, it'll tell you what hook sizes they fit. Um, this would be the size that fits size that fits the size 14th. I think it's 8 inch diameter. But uh, that's a bead you use, the one that's for that size hook. Since I apparently left the building, we are going to tell you that it's brown, uh, light brown, 70 denier thread. We're going to use about 15, but 5, triple it up, about 15 strands of organza for the tail again, and make it the same length as the shank of the hook. Now we're going to use Sunfire Yellow tying thread at 70 dinners. So we're going to have to <coughs> tie it in twice, uh, use two strands of it. And it's like a bright yellow, almost like a gold. Instead of using a gold rib, we're going to use the thread. And you can use any color thread. You could use a brown in here, or but we're going to use this color. Now the dubbing we're going to use is going to be odd. You're going to be like, "What?" But it's a, it's a UV hexagena UV dry fly dubbing, but it has like a pinkish tint to it, and uh, it looks really cool. It works really well in our flashbacks. So we're going to use that as our dubbing. Now we're going to twist that tying thread together to make a thicker one strand. And we're going to wrap that the opposite way. We're going to rib it the opposite way we uh, put the dubbing on to make a more secure fly. Now we're going to tie that nymph skin on top again. And I'm going to show you what it looks like with some of the paper pulled back, as you can see here. Now that's about a quarter inch wide. And again, we're going to tie that directly on top of the hook. So when we wrap it over, it's directly on top. You're going to use the same legs as you did in the last video and you're going to tie them in two legs going forward without tab you're going to hold that tab and you're going to tie as close as you can to that bead and then you're going to put thread wraps behind that one thread wraps all the way up to the second set of legs and then you're going to put just a couple thread wraps right behind the legs if you don't want much thread going back that ta uh, that other rubber part behind the second legs and then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to pull up on the rubber and right behind the rubber tab, right behind the uh, bead. Stretch it, cut it off. Don't cut your thread. Grab this last set of legs because you're not going to use them. Stretch that out, cut that off as close as you can to the second set of legs, and that's how you tie the legs in again.
And for the dubbing, we're going back to the ice dubbing in a brown color. Right on. I love ice dubbing and the thorax of these flies, and it works. They're killer. I, like I said, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how good they work. So we use the, the ice dubbing. We run the, the loose dub it so that the hairs stick out up there at the, like I said, represent gills, little legs, other kind of stuff sticking off the thorax of this fly right up behind the bead. You want to dub it, you just dub it right behind the bead. Now you want to pull the nip skin over and tie it off right behind the bead. And then pull the nip skin back. You kind of can stretch it just a little bit, you'll feel it stretch. And then cut that off as close as you can. Then you want to whip finish it. And once you've done whip finish it, now let's take a closer look at this fly. long rodders welcome to the end of that video them two flies work and I'm gonna give you proof if you go right here and now I'm gonna show you they that video that I just linked to that was caught on the uh, they were caught on the olive lively legs and the video clips I put right if I can find them. If you don't see any, that means I couldn't find them. We'll put them in here. And uh, hope you like that. Uh, if you checked all that stuff out. Um, the first fish that Tracy caught on um, the sock straightened out the hook. It was huge. Second cast after being told that the fishing wasn't so good that, that day. Her second cast, she hooked into this huge fish. Uh, it was big. I mean, it straightened out our lively legs hooks. To tell you how big it must have been, is I re-bent the hook back into its original bend, right? She tied that, kept that fly on and caught like 10 more fish on it. 10 more fish, put it, back in her box and the, that's how good these this what I tied just the way I just showed you actually I tied them up while I was making the video for you that's how solid these are that fly is still together looks great and she put it back in her box after 10 11 fish so they really built solid that that super glue idea works good um, the brown trout, I only caught two fish on that, so or the browns, and uh, that was just because it was white deer, and uh, Tracy was about uh, done. She had a problem got in a tree, and just was not having a good day, so she wasn't wanting to be there very long, and it was cold again, and windy again, which it seems to be like Pennsylvania today, it rained again, so it seems to be what like here in Pennsylvania, what we're going through, but hey, man, if you, you know, still get out you know we're thinking about going out today even though it's windy you know we might make it we might not uh, depends on how Tracy feels after work I had off today because it rained all day I do outside construction hard to do in the pouring down rain so uh, I decided to make you video and this was a very long video it took me almost all day to make this video because of both flies it usually takes me about six hours per video to make a time video so you can imagine that took me a really long time so I hope you like them they really work I got proof I just showed you um, and if you still haven't gone back make sure you go back and click that loyal sock video excuse me <clears throat> excuse me 
because not only they had stocked it, so we did catch a lot of stockies, but there is one amazing, pretty rainbow I caught that was not stocked. It was a holdover, or I wouldn't say it was native, but it was a holdover. It was a wild or a wild trout, wild dirt trout, um, as you can see in the colors. But anyway, that was caught in the lively legs olive too. So if you think that maybe these ain't gonna work on wild or trout, <laughs> think again. So, you have a good day. I hope you tie these up and get them in your box. You must have them. Okay, you must have these flies. All right. Keep them wet, out of trees, and only give them fish a sore lip. Hey, go check up these videos above me. And over there, the ones just for you. This is the next video. Go check it out now, man. It's the next video you need to play. It's right, right here, right up here. Go check it out. Over there, go check that one out. You know you wanna, so go do it now. Get on it, let's do it.